Hello and welcome to Ben Rosser's Conservatorium of Audio. I'm Ben Rosser and today we're going to be taking a look at some of the cool features available in Ableton Live 8 for manipulating your audio clips and audio loops. So as you can see we're just starting with a new live set today which you can get to by going to the file menu and going to new live set or using the control n shortcut and we're just going to delete this MIDI channel as we're not going to be needing that one for the moment. So we're just going to grab hold of an audio clip and drag it into one of the empty slots on the audio channel. And by double clicking on that one you'll see that we bring up the clip controls and the clip view down the bottom. So we'll just play that one so that you can hear what it sounds like to start off with. So a bit of an interesting kick drum loop we've got to work with there. So going down to our clip view on the left hand side you can see we've got the name of the clip which we can edit by clicking on it as well as the ability to change the colour of the clip which is quite handy to be able to organise your clips especially in a rather complex live set. So next thing we'll do is we'll just play that again and take a look at some of the features we've got for manipulating that. Our most simple features are our transpose control. Which can be quite handy, especially if you're working with a clip that you're trying to put with a couple of other ones and doesn't seem to fit quite right. Sometimes just adjusting the transpose a bit will allow it to all gel together that little bit better. If you're finding the transpose is a bit rough and not allowing you to get close enough, you can always use a detune control as well, which allows you to detune in smaller increments than you can do with the transpose control. Beside that, you've also got a volume control, which allows you to adjust the volume of the, the clip itself. And as you can see, when we adjust that one, the waveform automatically changes to show us how we're adjusting it which is quite a handy feature. Let's you know whether or not you're going to be clipping. For example, if we push it up a fair bit, you can see that we're actually starting to clip, which is going to cause some rather unpleasant distortion if we're not careful. One of the other handy features with most of the controls in Live 8 is you can automatically take them back to their default settings by right-clicking them and going Return to Default, or you can just use the Delete key on your keyboard, which does the same thing. One of the other features I really like about manipulating clips in live is by clicking this button here, we can automatically reverse the clip, as you can hear. Which doesn't necessarily work so well with a kick drum, but when we get some other clips happening in, in a little while, you'll get to see how that, that works a bit better. We've also got a high quality button, which we can turn on which will allow us to get better transposition and better warping out of the clip without it getting glitchy and without it having bad artifacts as we were hearing before. So if we try transposing that one now... As you can see, we're getting much cleaner result than we were previously. Our RAM button also allows us to load the clip into the computer's RAM, as opposed to streaming it off the hard drive, which can be really handy, especially if you're playing a lot of audio clips. You'll find that sometimes the hard drive can't keep up, so loading some or all of them into your RAM will allow Ableton to get to the clip information a lot quicker, which is quite handy. Next to those controls, we've got our, our warp controls, which allows us to turn the warping of the audio on and off, as well as controlling the original tempo of the track so that we can adjust how live we'll warp it. And below that, we've got controls for either doubling or halving the original tempo, which can allow us to speed up or slow down the clip relative to the tempo that we're using. So if we play the clip again... As 
As you can see, that slows it down by half. Or you can speed it up, which is quite handy. We'll just stick with the original tempo for there for the moment. You've also got multiple different modes as far as the, the warping engine in Ableton Live. Generally with something like this, beats would tend to be the best mode. Although you, you do have other modes for different material. Say you're working with a lead sound or a vocal, you might want to choose a different mode that will actually give you a bit of a better sound. The highest quality modes tend to be the complex and complex pro modes. But again, depending on the material you're working with, you may find one of the other modes does a bit of a better job. The re-pitch mode is a bit more like the pitch control on a DJ's turntable, which will also adjust the speed that the clip's played back, along with how you pitch it, which can be quite handy. So we're just going to put this one in complex pro mode, and we'll see how that one works with this beat. As you can see, because we're working with a beat, the uh, complex pro mode is not necessarily going to be the best, and we do get a bit of that vocoderish formant sound when we transpose it, as you just saw. So each of the modes offers different controls. For example, the complex pro mode is giving us a formant control and an envelope. Playing around with those, you can tend to get a bit of a better sound that may fit better with what you're working with. As you can see, if we go back to the, the beats mode, we then get a couple of different controls. For example, it's giving us the option to preserve different parts of the beat. At the moment, we're preserving the transients, so Live will pick out each of the main transients and try to preserve those and their timing, which is quite handy. But again, experimenting with the different modes will allow you to get different effects with the sound. So as far as those ones, I'd recommend having a bit of a play around with them and see what works best for you. Just to the right of that, we've also got our controls to adjust the start and the end of the clip, as well as our controls to allow us to loop when the loop button is turned on. So as you can see at the moment, the clip's starting on the start of beat 1 and ending on the start of beat 5 as you can see in the clip view over here. And when we've got loop turned on, we can currently see the loop starting at the same position, but ending four bars after it starts. So the loop length and the end of the clip do work slightly differently, although when you're using the loop mode, the end time is not actually used. If we turn that one back off, you'll see that the end is now highlighted again. So, for example, if we don't want to loop this clip and we just wanted the first two bars to play, we can just grab hold of our end marker and drag it to the end of the second bar. And as you can see, that's updated as well. If we drag that one back, you'll see that automatically updates as well. If we turn on the loop mode, as we're going to be wanting to loop this beat, again, we can just grab hold of the, the loop handle we can drag that to pretty much wherever we want, which is handy, and you'll see the loop length updating with that. And also adjust the start marker and the start of the loop as well. And one of the other really handy features is, for example, we could have the last two bars of this audio clip looping, but we could set the start to the very start of the clip. So what, would, what you would get happening is the first two bars would play, and after that, the last two bars would continue to loop, as we can see. Which is quite handy, especially if you've got a clip that has a bit of an intro, and then has a section that you'd like to loop. It can be quite a handy feature.